What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Python Panda Sentiment Analysis and Finance tutorial video. In this video we're going to continue working on uh, what we've been working on and that is uh, trying to develop a strategy based on sentiment analysis and see if we can you know, get anything out of it. And the other idea is just to help us get comfortable working with pandas. So where we left off we developed this very basic strategy that buys and sells based on just a few uh, situations basically. And we've back tested it against a single stock, but now what we'd like to do is back test it against a wide range of stocks. Now, there's one more thing I want to add, and that's going to be we have to change something in the single stock auto MA. And what we have to change is right at the end here, what we want to do is we want to have it uh, before we return data frame, we want to do df.sort underscore index and then in place equals true. And what this is going to do is it's going to sort by the index of the data frame. If the index was numbers, it would sort by you know number size. If the index was, say, uh, words, it would sort alphabetically. In this case, it is um, a date time, and it's going to organize it by date time. And so the reason why we have to do this is when we're using just pandas, and we, and we just when we tell pandas, hey, we want to plot this, and it's date stamps, Pandas is smart. Pandas is going to plot the way that we expect it to plot. But when we start to do analysis on this, feed it through another function, and then feed it back to pandas, pandas can get confused. And what's going to happen here is we're actually back testing based on um, really running it through this function, and then we're going to back test it. And the problem with this is I think it's in like mid March or so, we the the actual data dump has some May data in it. So it basically jumps from like March to May and then back to March and continues on again. And you're gonna find this in a lot of data sets actually where there, you've got some data that's mixed up and it's not necessarily organized by date. So that's what we're doing here because this is obvious that will cause a lot of problems uh, down the road whenever price suddenly changes significantly and then goes right back. And not only is that um, bad for the back test, it's also just based on bad data, right? So um, so that's why we want to sort it by the index. So before we return the data frame, um, we're going to sort it. So next, uh, we want to work on this back test. So this back test, um, basically we want to back test all of the stocks. So the S&P 500-ish or the S&P 600 worth of companies here. So um, we need to add a few more things to this back test. And then what we want to do is we want to save a bunch of data from the back test. That way, if we want to kind of play around or visualize this in various ways, we don't have to continually do the back test just to visualize the data. We can do the full back test, save a bunch of data from the back test, and then visualize much quicker rather than running the whole back test over again. So, as you can imagine, the, I mean, the back test, at least on my computer, for one company is like 20, 30 seconds. So, obviously, for 600 companies, we're talking quite a while. Um, that would take like an hour. So. Anyway, um, we're going to modify this a little bit. So the first thing we want to do with this is we want this uh, function to understand what the stock's name is. So we're going to say name equals datas, and it's just we're just going to reference datas type, and then we'll just say the zeroth element. It could be any element really, but that we'll reference that. Then what we want to do is we're going to save a performance array. We're going to save a data array. And then we're going to save a percentage change array. And then we're going to have this all written to a file. So for now, we'll just do this perf underscore array equals empty, date underscore array equals empty, and perf change equals empty. And actually, I call these all arrays. They're going to be just Python lists. Sorry if you're OCD about that stuff. <laughs> and uh, I think that's all the empty stuff that we need now. So now what we're going to do is really all of this can stay the same. We don't really have to change anything here. After, let's see, I guess before the exception of pass, so let me think here. We're gonna do, because um, we wanna do for each row. So underneath the try, so not there, but there, we're going to say current percent change. And current percent change is going to equal, uh, we want to go ahead and round this a little bit. And this is going to be round the current 
valuation minus starting capital. Uh, and then we want to divide it by starting capital. So new minus the old divided by the old times 100. So divide it by starting capital times 100. And then we'll just round this to the nearest fourth. And this will do here. And I know it's getting angry because we, let's see. New minus the old divided by the old. And then so there. And that should encompass our entire round function. And it does. So that's our uh, current percent change basically for each row. It's going to save that percent change because what we end up wanting to do is so we can kind of normalize all of this data is we're going to plot it based on percent change, not based on actual change. Um, so we can plot all of these companies together. And then we're going to say purse underscore change dot append um, current percent change. Oops current percent change and then we're going to do perf underscore array dot append uh, the current valuation and that is being defined here and here and then finally we want to do date array dot append index and this is just so we can save this real nice to a CSV file and then plot it later on and this is also why we're why it won't work with pandas anymore is because we're ripping it away from pandas and then we're going to bring it back later on. So that's why it's really important that we order this correctly. And then that should be it for the try. We come down to the holdings, percent change. We can print all this stuff out if we want. Um, we don't really need to because so we're just going to save all this stuff, but I'll leave it there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to come down here and let's see. I think what we'll do here is right okay so next what we're gonna say I guess we'll just loop through this we're gonna say x equals 0 and then let me make some space here and then we're gonna say for each p in perf underscore array and we're just gonna use this to iterate through this entire loop here um, our entire data set and we're gonna say save data equals open and we're going to call this performance data sp 500 ish dot csv we're going to open this with the intention to append and then what we're going to say is what we have to we have to save you know create a line that we want to save so this line is going to be kind of a funny line but you'll just have to uh, work with me on this uh, so what we're going to do is let's see we'll do line equals string date underscore array x and then we'll do plus uh, that plus the name plus some commas here plus string each p plus another comma plus string Purse underscore change x and then all of that plus a new line okay and there is a CSV uh, like module for Python um, but I actually kind of like doing this a lot of people ask me why I don't use CSV the CSV module it's just because I'm used to doing it if you want to do this with the CSV module have at it so anyway, that's the line that we want to save. And then basically what we want to do is save data.write that entire line. And then we're going to do x plus 1, or yeah, plus equals 1. And then once we've gone through that entire loop, we're going to do save data.close. And then we can actually close out of you know, all of this data. So once we've done that, now the next thing that we want to do is uh, Basically, we've defined this entire uh, backtest, but what we want to do now is we actually want to, and we've saved, we're at least sort of saving it to a file, but we need to also iterate through all of the stock you know, company names that we have. So what we're going to do next is we're going to come down, save data uh, underneath sa save data.close, and we're going to append or put in this entire stock list. Now again, kind of like writing out the whole uh, strategy and all that, 
I don't really see any reason why we need to type out five, literally like 500, um, well, 600 names. So I'm just going to copy and paste it, and if, as long as I remember, I will put it in the description. If I don't remember, someone say something, and I will put it in the description of the video. So I'll paste that in. So that's our entire stock list here that we're going to be using. And then what we want to do is we're going to say for each stock in stock list, what do we want to do? Um, well, here we're just going to say data equals single stock, oops, single stock auto MA. And then we're going to say each stock. So each stock in this list will be fed through this auto MA, which basically returns the data frame, which we're saving as data at the moment. And then we're going to come down and we're going to do back test, whoops, back test, uh, data. Close I equals the third, and then change I equals 11. So that's basically this stuff, so we can get rid of those. Now, um, we'll come down here, and really, I think that's all we have to do, because this will automatically save all of the data that we want to work with. So that's pretty much it. The only other thing I'll do is we'll add a try and accept in here, just in case, because we've added a lot of stuff, and we could definitely have... Um, some sort of error so print or exception e print string e oops, time sleep and we'll sleep well not that long I'll sleep for like 15 seconds just so we can see uh, see it without zooming by and so now what's going to happen is going to go through all of these companies and save this data to this uh, CSV which will just end up in the same directory as our script so this might take a while so I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the video here but I'm going to run it and it would be wise to for you to run it and not continue with the next video until you have run this and you have all the data saved here. So if you have any questions or comments or something's going wrong, uh, feel free to leave those below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.